HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk, to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the Hillers have a couple teams in the fall postseason, and Hopkinton High School got dressed up for the annual Halloween costume contest. But first, after nearly five years of planning, fundraising, and renovating, the Sky's the Limit Middle School Courtyard officially opened. The courtyard will be used for theatrical and musical performances, as well as classroom space and student activities. Here is the long-awaited opening ceremony for the middle school courtyard. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Hopkinton Middle School Sky's the Limit Courtyard. What a remarkable day for us all to be standing here in our new courtyard. Just a few years ago, this was just an idea to change an unused and unsightly space into something lovely and useful, and I think we've accomplished that. This day has long been coming, and we are thrilled to share this celebration with you. This beautiful space is a testament to this amazing community and serves as a symbol to our students and to each other, to the power of collaboration, hard work, and relentless fundraising. <laughs> Speaking of fundraising, we still have a few items to add to our courtyard it's, uh, but to make it a finished product, but we didn't want to delay our celebration since our space is now usable and open for business. We wanted to share with you that in the spring, we will be adding electrical, having raised the funding for this over the past month, so we don't have to run electrical extension cords through a classroom window. Um, and we're planning a landscape shower in the spring as well. I'm overwhelmed by the generosity of all of you that are here tonight. What you've contributed through time, talent, creativity, and financial support. You've helped turn this idea into a reality. I'm inspired of thinking about how our staff and our students and our community will use this thriving space. This courtyard will be the catalyst for lessons extending beyond the classroom, engaging students, and enhancing learning. Imagine the creativity, the exploration, the budding friendships, and the performances that will happen right here. The words thank you don't fully capture how appreciative we are tonight. That said, please accept our heartfelt appreciation and our sincere gratitude. Thank you to each of you for buying bricks, attending our fundraising events, making leadership gifts, and providing in-kind donations. Please, if you haven't already done so, please walk around and find your brick. View our donor recognition plaque, which is located in the library. And please just spend time here in this beautiful space. Speaking of catalysts, I'd like to turn things over now to the person who brought us all together, who started this entire vision, Mrs. Mary Ellen Grady. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. There we go. Um, thank you so much for coming. This is truly a, a vision that came to life because of everyone that's here. Hi, Patrick, I just saw you. Um, I'm so thrilled that you were able to make it. Among those do donating to the courtyard were the families and friends of an amazing young man, Shane DeRoche. When I say meow, please respond by saying your loudest meow, because that is what Shane, the way he said hello and goodbye. Are you ready? Yeah. Meow. Meow. Yeah. You can do better than that. Meow. Meow. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, Shane. The performance area with this beautiful pergola is a fitting tribute to a young man who is full of love, spirit, laughter, mischief, and lots, lots of laughter, mischief, and music. Shane was a member of our chorus and loved to mix original music. 
each time someone steps on this stage to perform, it will be a tribute to shame. I found the following poem, whose author is unknown, that I thought was fitting for shame. Do not judge a song by its duration, nor by the number of its notes. Judge it by the richness of its contents. Sometimes those unfinished are among the most poignant. Do not judge a song by its duration, nor by the number of its notes. Judge it by the way it touches and lifts the soul. Sometimes those unfinished are among the most beautiful. And when something has enriched your life or someone, and when its melody lingers in your heart, is it unfinished or is it endless? At this time, I would like to call Amanda and her family. Amanda is Shane's mother and some of Shane's closest friends who will hand Amanda the plaque that will be placed in this performance area in dedication to our own Shane. Could, have, could Amanda and her family come up and could the Hurley boys please come up? Thank you so much for bringing us a beautiful person to our school and hopefully this will be a fitting tribute to Shane for many, many years to come. At this point, I would like to invite to the stage Ruth Pagluca, Ann Schneider, Kim Pucci, Marianne Ayer, Tom Dawson, and Al Rogers. I'd also like to invite uh, students from Ms. Harris and Ms. Coble's class to join us on the front step. open the courtyard. After the opening ceremony, I caught up with one of the key people behind the project, middle school assistant principal Mary Ellen Grady, as well as principal Alan Keller. Exciting day, you cut the ribbon today, how does it feel? It feels exactly like the name of the courtyard. The sky's the limit, it really is the limit. I feel like everything is possible and if you, I hope you noted that the sun came out just as people were entering to look at the courtyard. It's an incredible feeling to have the community come together like this with all of the people who have worked tirelessly with their talents, their time, their energy, their money, everything to make this happen for our kids. And I just hope the community comes out and uses it every time they can. This was the first band that um, played on the stage, which was really exciting for me. And it's our own eighth grade boys, Take Four, which who are awesome, who learned the word, learned learned the entire song of Imagine last week, so they could play it for me because I asked them if they could do it because that's what I think it is all about. You know, where, you know, imagine if there was no courtyard. You know, we are all dreamers, and this is what we can dream, and this is the possibility when you have a dream. So it's awesome. All right, well, the courtyard looks beautiful. Uh, could you talk about the, the process and how long it took to finalize everything before it was ready for the ribbon cutting? <laughs> there was quite a process. Um, it took five years in the making to get to where we are today. And as Mr. Keller had said, we're not quite done. We still have we have the electricity to put in. We did raise some more money, so we, we have enough of the electrical to be run now. 
but we'd like to put in all of the niceties so the classrooms are, are available for students, so there's places to sit. Um, but it was five years from thinking about it, calling Kim Pucci on the phone and saying, you know, can the, she was with the Hopkinton Educational Foundation, and I just asked her if she could come out and, you know, could she help us with this? Did she think this was a good idea? I actually, it was my first day on the job. I fell off my chair, literally fell off my chair, and was so thrilled that she said, yes, I think we can help you. So that was the start of it. And it, in that time, everyone has come out um, from... A girl giving her birthday money, you know, to the biggest donors that you'll see that have, have given um, the DeRoche family that donated over thirty thousand dollars, so the space could be av available. So, so many things were done um, by so many people that it really has been a group effort. The kids came out and they were shoveling, they were raking, they were cleaning, they laid the sod with the with the men. They, you know, hauled in um, bricks because we had a tele. I think it's called a telebelt that comes in and brings the bricks over, and we had a crane that was bringing things over. But then there was one pallet that was left that we forgot about so the kids came over on on one of the hottest days this summer and they carried the bricks in one by one so it is really it's, it's a huge community effort and just really I'm, I'm like I can't even tell you how excited I am that it's finally here but I am now the first day of school uh, the students must have saw this what did they think about it? Well, they didn't see the grass. They saw. They did see. They saw the the dirt. We didn't have. We had the um, bricks laid. So they were looking out the window, dying to get in here. But it wasn't safe at that point. So it wasn't until Columbus Day. Columbus Day was the day that the sod was laid, and that was when we were able to let them out. So they've. They're this often. Many of them. This is their very first time out here. So they're looking at it and they're just thinking about the potential and are very very excited about the possibility of how they can use it for their classes, um, for maybe an outdoor lunch one day for a treat, whatever. But it, it certainly is, is like, I just can't believe it. It's here. And I'm well, so happy. It's finally here. You guys did a great job. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And thank you for being here from the very first step of the journey. I really appreciate that. You've been great giving us terrific coverage. And I hope people see this and see what possibilities there are in the world because your imagination is the only thing that limits you. All right, so uh, the courtyard, uh, you cut the ribbon today, it's officially open, how does it feel? Uh, it feels great. It's, it's um, you know, when we look back and think back to the original uh, conversations we were having about this, that seems like a really long time ago, um, but, you know, uh, it actually happened much quicker than I would have ever imagined when I thought about taking this space and turning it into a usable, beautiful um, space that's going to transform our school, transform the way teachers are able to teach. It's, it's, it's a very exciting thing. So it's, it's a, a really special night and we're excited. How do the students feel about it? They must have caught a few glimpses of it. Oh, they absolutely have. I mean, they've been seeing, you know, starting at the end of last year when we started to move some things out. and. And over the summer, you know, we kept updating our students that follow us on the Instagram account about what we were doing. They've, they've been exciting and they, they've been excited and they've been commenting and they see the stuff as they pass through the hallways or go into the library. So they're thrilled. And, you know, it, it started three years ago, four years ago, really. And we started talking about this with students and they really played a big role in shaping what this what the space looks like. So it's I think it's it's exciting, but at the same time, it's also a really good lesson and um what can happen, how you can take something that uh, is just an idea and with hard work and, and building it together and a plan and the right people and really excited people and relentless people, uh, what can happen? And so I think it's it's beyond just a usable space now, it's actually the whole process has been a really good lesson in working together and, and, and again, just uh, um, you know it, it's something that says a lot about this community of Hopkinton and how special it really is. You can view many pictures of the courtyard ceremony at seenandhopkinton.org and check out more video from the opening festivities on our website, hcam.tv, and also at our YouTube page. Coming up next on HCAM News, we will let you know how the Hillers are doing in the postseason. Hopkinton High School got in the Halloween spirit with their annual seniors costume contest, and Courtney has our HCAM insider. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. Don't you dare touch that dial. 
HCAM News is supported by our viewers. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. My name is Louise Coleman. I'm with Greyhound Friends on Saddle Hill Road in Hopkinton. We uh, have an adoption kennel here and we have greyhounds. We also have started having hounds and hound crosses and beagles. We're always here, seven days a week, nine to five. Our website is greyhound.org and our phone number is 508-435-5969. So uh, we're open to the public all the time. Just uh, give it a ring. Welcome back to HKM News. Every year at Hopkinton High School, the seniors get to participate in a costume contest and have the chance to win some prizes. This year, the competition was close and the costumes were very creative. It was Halloween at Hopkinton High School, accompanied by a performance from the Beatles. The costumes were very creative as usual. The Disney characters made an appearance, and look out, there was some serial killers on the loose. Mariachi performers provided some entertainment. The three blind mice, as well as Alvin and the chipmunks, were in the house. While this was all going on, some students got a workout in. This may have been a bit of a distraction to basketball practice, but the Flint Tropics of Hopkinton got in some well-needed reps. Here is Hank and Lloyd with the results of what was a very competitive costume contest.
However, there was one slacker who decided to skip class. Uh, I don't even know. <laughs> Absolutely. Choosing who won the prizes had to be extremely difficult. Unbelievable costumes. You could see a ton of pictures of the high school Halloween festivities at seeninhopkinton.org and also a ton more video on our website, hcam.tv. A number of Hiller's sports teams earned a postseason spot. Here is how things have gone so far. A few Hiller's fall sports teams made the postseason. The Hopkinton Hiller's football team fell in the Division III Southwest quarterfinals to Duxbury 28-14 in their first playoff game. The Hopkinton Hillers will now go back to playing regular season games. They will pick up with Norwood at home, then have Walpole on the road on the 13th. Then on the 26th, it's the annual Thanksgiving game against Ashland. Hillers volleyball is into the postseason. The defending state champions are the fourth seed in the Division II Central Bracket. They will play in the quarterfinals Monday, November 9th at home against 16-6, fifth seeded Medfield. For all Hiller sports information, be sure to check out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Facebook and Twitter page. Congratulations to Hiller's field hockey. They also earned a spot. Unfortunately, in the first round, the Hillers fell to Notre Dame of Hingham, one to nothing. To stay up to date with the Hillers postseason efforts, be sure to stay tuned to our website, as well as our Facebook and Twitter pages. There is a whole lot of programming coming up on the HCAM channels. To get you caught up with everything you need to know, here is Courtney with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, November 6th at 8 p.m., Chef Chris McFall joins the hosts to discuss his personal chef business on Hopkinton Coffee Break. Basically, I go to people's houses and, and I personalize their menus for them and I make their meals for the week. So when they come home, they open the refrigerator, mm -hmm. they have everything in there, all nicely organized. They're their personal blue apron. On Saturday, November 7th at 1.30 p.m., the volleyball game against Bellingham will air. And at 3 p.m., it's Volleyball versus Millis. During a new Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, on Monday, November 9th at 7 p.m., Betsy Ann Duvall showcases some of her art and shares the stories behind the pieces. I would pass them to people, and people would look at them, and they would start looking at the pictures, and then they would, you know, maybe take something out, and then they would look up, and because they were all stitched together, they realized that all the people I'd given envelopes to were all stitched together, too. On Thursday, November 12th at 6.30 p.m., the Elementary School Building Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And on HCAM Ed, the TVL Cheerleading Championships will air throughout the week. Check hcam.tv education for program dates and times. If you want to know when all of our future HCAM programming will air, just visit hcam.tv slash news updates to sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. You can also sign up for our daily news updates and hear about the latest and greatest from Hopkinton. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook pages. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, we thank you for watching.
there you stand.